to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be, I think, my third attempt at this. I've been sick for a while, which is why there's been the delay in the matches. Anyway, bottom right-hand corner, we have Whip starting as the Yellow Terran. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Jane starting as the Teal Protoss. This is on Vermeer. I actually thought Allegro was the last map in the pool, but Allegro is in game five, so this is must win for Jayun, considering how Allegro potentially favors whip style of play. This is one of those maps. Oh, by the way, uh, after this, don't have a lot of uploads for you guys. I'll try to do a few things here and there. If you have any suggestions, let me know and I will hop on them. I do want to do another uh, Let's Play of New Vegas this time down the line, which is something that kind of takes prep time. Uh, which I might have more of moving forward, we'll see. Anyway, Vermeer, large natural expansion, pretty wide choke, which makes it potentially bustable. You can see where a lot of Dragoons can line up and assault that, but once you get past the mid-game stage, you have this easy to take third and easy to hold because by then you have all the siege tanks, you're holding this territory between your natural. So what tends to be the standard play for Terran is to go for that three base play to make your way towards level two up and level one armor, just sit back until you get 200, 200 and go for more of a macro style. That Whip is capable of doing that, but again, that's not where he's had a lot of success. So that might play right into Jayun's hands where Jayun can just sit back, get economically aggressive and end up with a stronger foot into the late game. It looks like Whip already staging to take a very quick natural expansion. This is a four player map, so maybe trying to sneak something here. So we'll have to see whether Jayun builds this is kind of one of those situations I like this play because going for earlier zealots on a four-player map is less favorable for a lot of reasons. And also, Jayun is one of those guys that sometimes is not, will scout extremely late. Extremely late just to try to sneak economic, is just try to squeeze as much economic play as he can early. It looks like initial scout making the way up right hand corner for whip. Barracks is going to finish on the front. It'll be basically that, a supply depot and a command center. I do want to comment though, this is a little bit more favorable from this position because you can get siege tanks up on the high ground but if you do not get siege tanks up on the high ground siege tech in a hurry it become it can be very difficult to get siege tanks through that you'd have to either lift the barracks up opening up a hole to do run buys or you have to actually walk through the scv line otherwise so that could prove troublesome down the line second pylon warping and it looks like we're not seeing an initial result for jayun jayun opting to instead go for cybernetics core first Looks like he's going to go ahead and actually skip all Zealots initially and go for a Dragoon right off the bat. Whip initially scouting the upright hand corner. Now he's going to go for a Caddy Corner scout to the bottom left. And near that, there's that Supply Dupo uh, blockade to deal with potential initial Zealots. But no Marines as of yet. Refinery being built. So Whip, yeah, this is the first Marine being built at nearly the three minute mark. So Whip really playing it economically greedy here as well. SCV able to cycle in. It's going to see that first Dragoon as it's spawning, but it's going to get a look at that Dragoon. It's going to be able to see that it was a one gate opener. Also seeing that probe cycling out towards that natural expansion. And also see that cybernetic score spinning. So realizing that it is not a skip of... Well, let's see if we can see that SCV explode. Yep, managed to sneak that SCV exploding across that 6 o'clock location. Jayun opting for one gate into expand. He's dropping a second gateway behind this. He will have Dragoon range, keep in mind, and it's going to be a while before Siege Tanks are out because that command center delays, obviously, factory tech. Two Marines out on the front, another SCV sneaking out, perhaps to confirm that natural expansion. SCV's now saturating, so Whip initially getting the early economic advantage. SCV hopping in the bunker as well, likes feeling that safety. But the factory, yeah, is a ways off. And as far as counterplay, Whip isn't really going to be in a situation to apply any pressure after this. So I'll be curious if Jayun, after getting initial Dragoons out, to seal in potential Vulture play, if he opts to follow and just get a very, very quick third. First Dragoon going to migrate up. Hasn't. Never mind. The SCV not out there to scout. The SCV is out there to. <coughs> excuse me. Hopefully the coughs don't persist. Is out to plant a factory at the 9 o'clock location. I think this is very clever play from Whip. Recognizing that now, ooh, and another SCV, it looks like it's going to be able to sidle out. Dragoon now doing initial damage on that bunker. Second Dragoon making its way up. Is it going to catch that? Does get some initial shots on that SCV. And once he moves and sees the additional Dragoons making their way out, he should realize that it's uh, essentially a two gate follow up. I think he got an eye on that. So he. This is going to be four Dragoons on the front in a hurry, only two Marines to help defend it. So more SCVs are going to be required to pull off the line to help repair that bunker. 
and looks like that machine shop is just finishing, so it's going to be quite some time. But in the meantime, that factory going up at the 9 o'clock location, potentially some vultures could sneak out while the Dragoons are assailing the front and might be able to sidle into that natural expansion, get some damage done, and Jayun, in typical fashion, now that he's got those Dragoons attacking the front and realizing there's no vulture pressure or anything like that, he's going to go ahead and grab his third. And the SCV also trailing out maybe to grab an additional expansion. It's making its way to the 12 o'clock location, it looks like. So maybe Whip going to try to sneak a quick third himself. But first, he's got to survive the Dragoon Onslaught. Siege Tank about halfway finished. First Siege Tank's out. Again, it can't... It, this is a difficult path to go on the low ground, so it's probably going to have to wait for Siege Tank right on that corner edge. Actually, can he range? But even if it does range, Jayun can just cycle the Dragoons up a notch, which doing that exactly, and then re-engage that bunker and cost a little bit more minerals out of Whip. In the meantime, Vulture's starting to grow at that 9 o'clock location to potentially go for a swing by. Let's see, there are two pylons, but still a decent sized gap, so might be able to get some damage done. Second assim assimilator coming online. Worker counts just about even. Siege Tech does finish. Some, that Siege Tank now behind that bunker, or sorry, behind that barracks. Technically behind the bunker as well. Vulture speed being upgraded to aid. It looks like the Vultures just about missed it. Able to sneak in, get some economic disruption. And I'm going to call that 3, 4, 4 SCV kills? 5 SCV kills, potentially. I'm not sure if I caught it, but the Dragoon's drawing back to deal with those Vultures. All things considered, though, Jayun in a pretty comfortable position. He's got that the three bases up. He's taken minimal damage. Whip actually getting something out of this factory. The problem with having this factory out here, however, is if he's going for a timing attack, this is one factory that is not going to be in the field producing troops to go for a timing attack. Looks like the factory, the armory just finishing down here. And if he's going for a larger troop count to start put, basically this is kind of a, a factory that's going to be a null. It's just not going to be part of the production cycles to make movements to either grab a third or to go for some sort of two base play. Looks like two additional, fa or well, sorry, a factory and an engineer being, being dropped. Another vulture looks like it snuck it. I think that was just one latent vulture checking out, finding that third base. Citadel of Adun up, Jayun. Tacking on a couple additional gateways. Already has that robotic facility and an observer. Already in the base to go ahead and see the lay of the land. Academy coming online as well. Plus one weapons being built. But yeah, it's going to require a good amount of siege tanks from Whip. And I'll see if he drops the second machine shop. I kind of want to see a double machine shop play out of this to get siege tanks a little bit earlier to potentially grab a third rather than just playing it off two bases here. But we'll see, especially with this factory out here. Although the other play here is if Whip just grabs this 12 o'clock base and plays this as his third location to try to catch Jayun off guard. That's uh, another potential situation here. So in the meantime, Jayun is comfortably making his way up to Arbiter Tech. He's got that Stargate. Looks like that was comps added almost immediately. Templar Archives coming online. So he's going to be in a really good position. Honestly, I don't know that Whip... Is, and oh, he's already starting to stage up. So the factory's landed again. It's going to continue to produce vultures. Let's see if it gets any disruption here at the 9 o'clock. Because potentially Jayun might go for a fourth here. He's in a comfortable enough position to do so. It looks like he is cycling. This is going to be close timing. So a vulture produced mid-map. A probe is making its way that direction. This could be actually be huge at slowing down Jayun's economy. Dragoon boxing that out. Let's see if it's able to slip past. It is able to slip past. Pylon dropped. But picking off the probe and laying a mine. That will actually delay the fourth quite a bit. More vultures actually sneaking out of the, the main. Siege tank count is growing on the front. No additional machine shop to fill that siege tank count in. More vultures making their way up to try to de delay that as long as possible. That is provoking photon cannons near that third. I like the mine placement here in between. The observer is making its way back down to help clear that mine and potentially get a fourth up. So Jayun, rather than just playing it off three base, I think recognizes that, especially with the observer in base, oh, it looks like a factory, or sorry, command center has already been built. It's going to be a while that can, before that can float out, though. So Whip really needs to delay this. Does manage to get yet another probe to delay that fourth. This is critical to stay in this economically, sneaking up. Going to lose those vultures, but at least, yeah, some mines are there to be annoying and slow things down. Another vulture pretty... So actually getting good use out of this factory, letting it be the forward... Vulture Assault production hasn't... Uh, I feel like, yeah, just delaying that 9 o'clock base might have been worth having that out there. But Whip does have the problem. Okay, he's got this command center in base. 
Plus one weapons is just about to finish. I don't know that this is enough siege tanks. What is that? Eight siege tanks? I don't know that's enough to cover the natural expansion and secure that third, particularly with Jayun with a huge economic lead macro-wise at this stage. It looks Jay like Jayun. Man, is he going to lose yet another probe? Uses, wow, loses yet another probe. Wh Whip is putting on a clinic as far as how to delay an additional base right there. The command center, <coughs> excuse me, just sitting there for supply at the moment. Fit five factories leading to a six factory count. Looks like Whip is going to go for that 12 o'clock base rather than, and he's just hoping that doesn't get scouted. So going to try to sneak that, that 12 o'clock base to have that be his third rather than going for anything else. And I think that is the right play. That factory finally getting scouted mid-map. Another vulture sneaking out. Let's see if the factory just lifts off. Looks a lot of the Dragoons cycling their way back. A couple vultures sneaking across with those siege tanks to maybe stage up. So if Whip can secure this base and get the 12 o'clock saturated, that will put him at four total. But right now, Jayun with a 40 supply lead, mostly in ground units, that factory finally going to fall. But man, it did a lot of work for what it was doing. But Jayun, he has a large enough attack force, even without the Arbiters on the, uh, in the field. He should be able to smash this. He's got Zelt leg speed, a huge supply, and this is just so much territory to cover. There's a lot of angles to engage this on. <coughs> Looks like the mines also placed a little bit too far forward, not quite within siege tank range. So they're going to get cleared on the forward field. Initial hit on those Dragoons, but honestly, Jane could just A-move, and it looks like he is going to, so Dragoons and Zealots flooding from the north. Some decent Vulture counts up above. The Zealots already on top of those Siege Tanks, though. And even with the plus one weapons, yeah, this was my concern earlier, is just not enough Siege Tanks and troops. And Jayun, <coughs> excuse me, continuing to hold a huge economic lead, is going to be able to shut down... Just needs to march those Zealots in and clear this base off. Maybe if Whip sieges from the high ground. Looks like he does have two Siege Tanks on the near high ground, but that's sending SCV scattering now back to the natural expansion. So Whip in trouble now at nearly half the supply of Jayun as Jayun's getting that fourth base up and running. And Jayun can, yeah, just retreat. And on top of that, as Arbiters are taking the field, he can go ahead and research recall. And although he does need to finish the job here and get some troops on the low ground, so the command center is... Da is Disrupted. The SCVs aren't there, but he needs to finish the job, take out that command center, or at least make sure that it's not going to be planted there. The SCV is going to try to pull a quick win and sneak right back out. So Whip finding ways back into this match. He does have that 12 o'clock base. It's not yet saturated yet. And Jayun now expanding everywhere, <coughs> taking the upper left. Some cannons to go ahead and block himself in, in the upper left. Some vultures sneaking the gap. They're going to get hunted down by some zelts. Dragoons and that Arbiter fairly rapidly. This is good play, though, from Whip, because this is at least keep, keeping Jayun back from assaulting any other location, because right now, Jayun could flat-out win the game just by... just with the huge supply lead he's got, by just crushing a lot of locations, although the high ground here would be some trouble, but, like, a decent place stasis, and then the rest of the troops walk, walking into the natural expansion, that would be it. Instead, Jayun doing the get-further-ahead method. Gonna go ahead and seal up top left and top right. Grab a quick drink for my voice right there. Looks like the 12 o'clock base is saturating a little bit, so that's technically a third. And Jayun did not wipe out this command center. So Whip getting another shot and also getting some bonus minerals out of that third. And again, he's planning on... Okay, now he's got the three machine shops down to fill in that siege tank count. He's going up to eight factories overall, which is basically where you want to be. Is cycling towards level two weapons. I think level two weapons just finished. So level two weapons, level one armor is there. And now, all of a sudden, even though Jayun has the supply lead, he's still way ahead. Whip is in a, a decent shell location. However, a recall at the main. Turret taken out. The science facility is at risk, as is the armory. And that would be two big pieces of tech to take. Whip needs to also be very careful reinforcing and defending this. Because otherwise, again, with the troops that Jayun has on the ground, he could march right into that natural expansion or even that third and create some disruption there. And he still has to worry about defending that 12 o'clock somehow. So having trouble some, uh, evicting this, it looks like group pair on that armory to keep it alive. But Whip losing a lot of supply depots in between. It looks like he is going to preserve that armory, which will be huge. He is going to preserve the science facility as everything's getting cleaned up. But this is still pinning him back, costing him a lot of resources in kind of unfavorable trades overall. And Jayun can afford to lose these tro uh, troops. Science vessel going down. <coughs> Excuse me as well. So Jayun continuing to macro up. 
he's out uh, about the max amount of saturation he wants. His main's going to mine out not too long from now, but that's still going to leave him with four mining bases, technically against uh, what will be three, because the main will technically mine out at that stage. I like that Jayun's also guarding the three o'clock base, making sure Whip's not making movements there. Jayun regathering, still with a huge supply lead, has that Nexus going up in the upper right-hand corner. This feels like a... L I'm okay with grabbing this. This feels... And uh, maybe even dropping some gateways for a potential refugee style. I feel like Protoss, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll take these Nexus before they can even mine out of them, and sometimes it uh, costs them free resources in long-term starvation matches like this, and I feel like Jayun's making that mistake right here. Whip still stuck, though, way behind. Still 40 supply down, but has found some breathing room. Level 2 weapons making its way. Didn't lose the armory, so it looks like he is going to be able to secure level 3 weapons. He's building a dropship to maybe get something out here, but another Arbiter moving in to drop yet another recall on top of this. So seize the dropship, and now the siege tank's going to have to pull back once again to deal with Jayun's drop. And let's see if this time, well, they'll be able to get the science facility. That will slow down level 3 armor. It looks like, let's see if they can pound down that armory. That would be a big play. It looks like they're going to be able to get the uh, Stargate as well. The Zealot's still marching through and actually pretty well cleaned up by Whip overall. Lost the Science Facility. He'll have to rebuild that if he wants to get the higher level armor upgrades at this stage. Level 3 weapons is still working. It looks like the armory is going to survive. But this is also keeping Whip back and in a scenario where he's not really going out and taking additional bases, uh, although I know his movement is more to go towards that 200 count at this stage and just have upgrades as it goes. Arbiter's still standing. It looks like it's going to be Arbiter versus Missile Turret over the long run. Jayun's still in a fantastic position. Still has a huge economic lead. All sorts of bases out in the field. I think he's a little bit confused as how Whip is still in this. Dropship getting caught out there in the field. But I, yeah, not realizing that 12 o'clock base is up and running. So Jayun, where he thought he was in a much larger economic lead, and he was still in a sizable economic lead even with that base up and running. I think he was thinking he was just going to starve Whip out on three bases. But Whip has managed to sneak out that third and get a sizable attack force uh, mounted out and forward. And this is now a situation where it's going to take Stasis or Recall or Psystorm to start busting through Whip's lines. Although Whip's still at a huge supply deficit overall, double Stargate whirling. Main mining out for both players shortly. And I'm almost wondering how long it's going to be before Jayun realizes so a vulture actually, these vultures might accidentally lead troops into that 12 o'clock location. I wonder how long it's going to be before Jayun realizes that location is uh, up and operational. Natural expansion is actually mined out for whip. So whip now down to two bases essentially versus five. Five mining bases, and these are going to be saturated bases. Jayun actually managing to get the probes cross map. A vulture quickly sneaking in, and this is, ooh, he's got to be careful doing things like this though, because moving troops into this upper quadrant is somewhat dangerous, yeah. The Zealot now finding that 12 o'clock base, so Whip in a little bit of trouble now. As Jayun's at 200 supply can start levying attacks against Whip, just... And honestly, as long as he has some solid stasis, these are a lot of clump siege tanks. Level 3 weapons is on level uh, online with level 2 armor, however. That means Whip's troops are going to hit very, very hard. Jayun's upgrades <coughs> not too shabby himself. Looking for, uh, looks like a bunch of vultures wanting to stream out, try to save the SCV lines, but there's not much left to save, to be honest. Whip, if he's going to get something done, needs to start moving troops out and dealing with Jayun's bases. And Jayun, yeah, I think he's in a solid enough position where he doesn't really have to worry about it. If he just plops in a couple additional Arbiters, which he's got the double Stargates running, so that should happen. He should have plenty of energy. Actually fielding some Dark Templar as well. That can always be frustrating. It's like Jayun feeling solid enough where he's going to go ahead and move to the low ground in the upper left-hand corner. Some vultures sneaking through might disrupt that momentarily. 12 o'clock base is all but gone, and the chances of Whip coming out of this match with a W are starting to dwindle. Although, I said that last match, too, and we saw Whip able to turn that around. Let's see if he's got another miracle under his belt. Upper right-hand corner natural expansion being grabbed as well. So Jayun grabbing absolutely everything. Whip actually in the red now upon losing that command center, but starting to move that army out. Curious where the additional Arbiter... There's the additional Arbiters. All it's going to take is a couple good stasis. That's a huge stasis. Let's see if there's another one. It looks like some distance mining from Whip there at the 3 o'clock, trying to escort it out with that army. And Jayun actually losing a lot of his army in this engagement, but it won't matter because he's got a large enough bank and enough troops where he can just keep pounding away at this. The SCV's under assault as they're returning. And the majority of Whip's army currently <coughs> in the Blue Crystal. So Whip in a lot of trouble here. 
Some more Zealots, and Dragoon streaming in, and Whip does not have a lot of resources left to his name. His main might out, his natural expansion gone. He's actually floating command center up there. There's a Dark Templar and other troops there waiting to see him and escort him out of that location. Our Dark Templar going to get some free shots on uh, on that Vulture as well. And more troops starting to stream forward for Jayun. And Whip at nearly half the supply count, and that is 200 versus 100 supplies, so that's a significant doubling. Although it looks like somehow able to get troops up into that 3 o'clock, Dark Templar still actually able to splash down three more siege tanks, so Jayun sitting pretty right now. Looks like a cannon was trying to <laughs> late, late cannon rush right there. It's a cleanup operation for Jayun. All he has to do is, yeah, again, keep those Arbiters out. Maybe even throw in some High Templar here. And he'll be fine at double the supply. And keep just, honestly, just start rallying troops. Start rallying troops towards uh, your opponent. A lot of gateways out. Looks like there's even some refugee stuff here in the upper right-hand corner. Should Whip magically break out. But things looking dire for Whip. He's running at two bases, essentially, versus five. Jayun at the 200 supply mark. A couple of vultures trying to sneak through and get something done, but they're getting caught very, very uh, right off the bat and rapidly. Here's some attack happening somewhere. Not quite sure where. It looks like some buildings being cleared out by Jayun. Take that buildings. Not sure what that was about at the main. But Jayun, yeah, sitting at 200 supply. The problem is, is he can't just sit on this. He does need to march out and make something happen. He can't just let Whip rebuild siege tank counts and take his time and start pressing across the map. Otherwise, this could turn into a, a turnaround disaster like game one. Observer's getting picked off. Whip kind of, yeah, catacoring for a huge army midfield. Looks like escorting addition with what's left of the probes to the upper right-hand base. Going to screen back around. Let's wait for those additional stasis. Actually, the troops moving in before the stasis drops. Actually, okay, so the stasis lands. Not a great stasis. Siege tank's getting peeled away. Dragoon's continuing to peel forward. Comsat dropped, but Jayun still able to march all the way down, and yeah, he'll. This will probably be an ar army reset on both sides, but again, it's an army reset that Jayun can afford that Whip cannot. So siege tanks gonna get wiped out, some dragoons getting peeled away. Jayun missing a, a bit of his army. I'm kind of curious where the rest of his army is, because this is like minus probes even. There should still be more troops on the ground. It looks like maybe they're sitting out towards a natural. Whip gonna GG right there. So that's gonna. Tie it up 2-2, and we will go on to a game five. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Well, welcome to a uh, follow-up thing that I'm just going to tack to the end of the previous one. Jayun wins, because what I did not realize as part of the format is because Jayun was going through the winner's bracket, he started one point up. So because he started one with one point over whip at the flat-out beginning because of the way they structured things, with the 2-2 tying of things, that puts him 3-0 victory. Or a 3-2 victory, I should say. So, Jayun, the official winner of LA, uh, of the LA LAN StarCon. Congratulations to him. Well-deserved. Uh, really fun matchups all the way to the finals with Whip. And it felt like really, yeah, intense. I'm glad he got to a dodge uh, Allegro as the final up <laughs> there. Otherwise, <coughs> I'm going to, yeah, produce some other content here in the background. If you guys have any suggestions or things you want to see or replays, toss them my direction um, or thoughts or whatever. Uh, let me know. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that and say still got a lot of love. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody.